Here's a reaction of ammonium dichromate that is formed into chromium-3 oxide once again. Let's assume that at the very start of my reaction, I have a total of one mole of the reagent. Given this, how many moles of the product, chromium-3 oxide, do I form? Looking at the balance equation, I say the ratio is 1 to 1. That means I expect one mole of chromium-3 oxide. But what if you find 0.8 moles instead? That's less than you expect. How can that be? Well, that's because the reaction is incomplete. An incomplete reaction can occur because of pollutants in the reagent, temperature may be off, too much moisture in the air, a whole variety of reasons. In order to quantify this mismatch, there's a quantity called percent yield. It is the ratio of the actual amount over the expected amount, theoretically, times 100%. So in this case, we found 0.8 moles of the product. We expected one mole. That ratio times 100% equals 80%. In this example, the percent yield is 80%. Let's look at a couple of examples that involve the percent yield. Here's one. This is a reaction, a formation reaction, of ethanol from ethylene. Now let's assume that the reaction yield in this reaction is 50% and that I desire at least 250 grams of ethanol. How many grams of ethylene do I need? Well, first I'd like to determine how many moles of ethanol are there in 250 grams. So that is 250 grams divided by the molar mass of ethanol and that is a total of 5.43 moles of ethanol. Now, given this, and assuming that I have 100% yield, how many moles of ethylene do I need? So I have to look at the mole ratio. The mole ratio is 1 to 1. So that means I would need 5.3 moles of ethylene to form 5.3 moles of ethanol. But this is only true if the reaction yield is 100%. However, the reaction yield is 50%. The fraction of 50% is 0.5. So 0.5 times the amount that I need should equal 5.43 moles of ethylene. So the actual amount of ethylene that I need equals 5.43 divided by 0.5. That's a total of 10.9 moles. I need 10.9 moles of ethylene to get 5.3 moles of ethanol. And that's because the percent yield is 50%. Let's look at another example. Here's a reaction of calcium hydride that reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. The percent yield in this particular case is 75%. Now, what mass of the product calcium hydroxide do I get under these conditions? The first thing to do in this particular case is to uh, write down the balance equation. And here it is. The reagents are calcium hydride and water, and the products are calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. This is the balanced equation. From the balanced equation, and knowing the limiting reagent, I can determine how much of the product I would get, assuming that I have 100%. So I have to quickly determine the limiting reagent. Well, in this particular case, that's not too difficult, because it's implicitly given in the question. There's an excess amount of water, which means that calcium hydride is the limiting reagent. I have four grams of it. Converting that to the number of moles by dividing by the molar mass, and then multiplying that by the mole ratio between the product and the reagent, I find the number of moles of the product, number of moles of calcium hydroxide. Multiplying that by the molar mass of calcium hydroxide, and I find a total of 7.04 grams of calcium hydroxide formed if the percent yield would be 100%. However, it's not. It's not 100%. It's 75%. So the actual amount, the actual yield, is the expected amount, the theoretical one we just calculated, times 75 divided by 100. That is 7.04 grams times 0.75, and that equals 5.28 grams of calcium hydroxide.